Hello everyone. Namaskaram. Myself Gunjan. And I am going to teach you physics for the remaining part. Dear, nobody can go back and start a new beginning. But anyone can start today and make a new and beautiful ending. So, from today, we together are going to start a fresh new beginning and are going to move on on a learningful journey. Let's hope that it leads us to a beautiful and worthy ending. Therefore, wishing each other luck, let's begin this journey with chapter number 2, Force and Pressure. And the topic for today's video is Rest and Motion. Let's understand it in this way. Imagine that you are traveling by a bus. If you compare your position with respect to the surroundings outside the bus, such as the trees, the fields, houses, etc., you will find that your position is changing with respect to them. With respect to them means unke comparison mein. So, you will say that you are in a state of motion. However, if you compare your position with respect to the surroundings inside the bus, that is, the passengers, the walls, the roof of the bus, then you will find that your position is not changing with respect to the surroundings and hence you will feel that you are at rest. Also, the things inside the bus like the chair and the bags etc. appear as if they are at rest. So, we can say that the same object can be at rest relative to one group of objects while it can be in motion relative to some other group of objects. So we can conclude that the terms rest and motion are relative terms. So we cannot say that, that an object is at rest or in motion until and unless we specify relative to which surroundings are we talking. So now we can say that a body is said to be at rest when the position of the body with respect to its surroundings does not change with space and time. And a body is said to be in motion when the position of the body with respect to its surroundings changes with time. Now we are going to learn about different types of motion. The first is translatory motion. Imagine you walk 10 steps first along a straight line and then along a curved line. Do all the parts of your body move through the same distance in the same time in both the cases? You would obviously reply yes. Yes, they move through same distance in the same time. It doesn't matter if you are moving along a straight line or a curved line. So now we can define translatory motion as the motion in which all the particles of a body move through the same distance in the same time. 
मीन्स एक ऐसा मोशन जिसमें कि बॉडी के सारे पार्टिकल्स सेम टाइम में सेम डिस्टेंस कवर करें लेट एस सी सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ ट्रांसलेटरी मोशन फर्स्ट अ कार और अ ट्रेन मूविंग अलॉन्ग अ रोड second a ball rolling on the ground third a girl sliding down a slope fourth pulling out a drawer of a table fifth firing of a bullet from a gun sixth a stone hurled from a catapult etc now this translatory motion is further divided into two types first rectilinear motion and second curvilinear motion let us first learn the rectilinear motion rectilinear means in a straight line when a body moves along a straight line then the motion of the body is said to be rectilinear some examples of rectilinear motion are a train moving on a straight rail track a car moving on a straight road a free falling stone a coin moving over a carom board next is curvy linear motion curvy linear means along a curve when a body moves along a curved line then the motion described by the body is called curvy linear motion some examples of this motion are a ball thrown upwards at some angle a car or train moving along a curved road or track so that's all for today we will proceed with the legacy of learning in the upcoming videos and continue this chapter further so thank you everyone for being here have a good day